let us look together at this question on confidence intervals that touches on hypothesis testing in the second part. Please pause the question, pause the movie and uh, try the question by yourself. While reading it, I'm extracting the important information. 150 orange in a random sample from a certain supplier were weighted and the masses X were recorded. The results are summarized below. So this one is about the sample. So it's a data about, it's data about the sample. Calculate a 99% confidence interval for the population mean of X. Just to revise a bit, to recap, the sampling distribution of the mean, because what we do is that we summarize, we uh, calculate the mean from the sample, is normally distributed, and that central limit theorem, because I were not told that the initial parent population is normally distributed. So central limit theorem tells me that the distribution of the samples is about normally distributed with a mean 15910 over 150 so it's the same as the mean of the sample and the certain standard deviation squared which is the variance now i do not know the variance of the population to use it here but i know the variance of the sample therefore i'm going to need an unbiased estimate for the variance of the population. From the sample, I need to estimate the variance, of the variance of the population. So an estimate of the variance of the population will be, and that's a formula you have actually in your formula booklet. So from your formula booklet, you can see the unbiased estimator for the variance of the population. So you can apply directly this formula which is 1 over 149 and minus 1, sum of x squared, 1525000 minus 14910 squared over n, over 150. So I'm going to use my calculator to compute it, and I'm going to get 288, I hope I'm right, 0.228. So that's an estimate for the variance of the population. And now imagine that, remember the idea behind the confidence intervals? The sampling distribution of the mean is normal and you are looking for the confidence interval. You are looking for a 99% confidence interval. So you are looking for the interval where 99% of your samples lie. And because my calculators allow, actually I can calculate this within one button with the inverse normal, given that this one is 0.5% and this area is 0.5%. But in the marking scheme, somehow they always want the Z value. So your Z value is from the standardized normal. So if you look at the standardized normal and you take here 0.5% and you take here 0.5%, therefore the area here is 99.5%. So if you look in your table of values, you get here two point five, seven, six. At this stage, I would like to remind you a very useful feature of the uh, list of formulae, the booklet that you get in the exam. On page 10, where you have the um, values for the normal distribution function, at the bottom of the page, you have this table with the most common critical value. So if you look at zero point, 995 here you see 2.576 2.576 so you actually don't need to use a calculator generally they will be given these ones here if it's another one then you'll need a calculator or the table of values i recommend a calculator so see how it's easy to find this z value so here we have the z value and we know 
that there is a correspondence between this e value and the point here given by uh, z equals x minus mu over sigma. So the point here will be therefore x equals uh, mu plus z sigma, right, if I do the algebra. So the point here will be x which is uh, 99.4, I guess it's an estimate, yes, I calculated it, it's an estimate of the mean, which I forgot to put here. So the estimate of the mean is 14910 over 150. So it is about 99.4. So I get 99.4, the estimate for the mu, plus 2.576 times square root of 288.228. And this point here is 99.4 minus 2.576 times square root of the variance, 288.228. So now when you do these calculations, you should get the confidence interval as being from 95.8, please check my calculations, to 103 to three significant figures. You are always required to give your answers to three significant figures, unless, for example, to three significant figures, both ends of the confidence interval round to the same number so that would be meaningless so then you'll choose more than three but it needs to be at least three let's look at question number two this supplier claims that the mass mean mass of his oranges is 100 gram use your answer to explain whether this claim should be accepted so 100 grams is in the middle of my confidence interval so if you think of our hypothesis testing this tells me that actually the mean the mean masses of his origin is pretty close to what to the mean that he claims so i would accept his claim that the mean mass is 100 because 100 is confined is contained within this confidence interval so my answer here would be 100 the mean mass of his origins is in the confidence interval. Therefore, accept, H, accept his claim, H0, right? His claim. And I'm not asking this question, but now I know from what we learn that is uh, at 1% significance level. Because the significance level is the area outside. I'm not asking about that. But I'm correct when saying that. So 100 lies within the confidence interval. Hence, yes, we accept his claim that the mean mass of his oranges is 100 gram. And the last question is a bit obvious. Briefly explain why the sample should be random. Uh, well, to avoid bias. avoid bias right you want an unbiased result and this would give you one mark